the caregiver becomes hyper vigilant to the needs of the of the patient and that often then is related to really poor self-care now one interest for me particularly in lung cancer is that the, sp the spouses oftentimes have their own comorbidities they own have their medical issues as they are you know later uh, in, in life they're the mean age is around 60 mid 60s so they own they have their own medical problems and from you know other from our other research we know that they oftentimes neglect their own medical care in while taking care of, of the patient so what the work that we're doing with the interventions that we're doing is we, we really try to get for the caregiver also take care of his or her own medical you know appointments self-care and really open the communications of relating to each other as patient and excuse me as husband and wife or like you know as partners as opposed to a patient and caregiver where the flow of support is very one-sided so our interventions focus on patient and caregiver relating to each other in a in a team approach and also making sure that the that the voice of the caregiver of the spouse is heard and uh, that the spouse receives support now to what extent the patient may tangibly support the spouse that's of course you know limited based on their physical uh, well-being but what we know is that emotional support listening being there uh, expressing love affection and care is the most important source of support anyway so uh, and regardless of of the condition um, most patients can do that and, and and want to do that so they need to be given an opportunity and also that what we think and what we're trying to figure out is that putting patients in this active role as opposed to just you know being the recipient of support it may actually help them and empower them and, and give them a, a sense of purpose and meaning that they are not you know helpless and they they still contribute to the relationship in an important manner